I'm pleased to welcome my fellow subcommittee members, the public, and our witnesses uh, to this hearing on reauthorization of the Elementary and Secondary Education Act. Uh, we very often use the term expert witnesses. Today, the table speaks for itself. We have expert witnesses here today. Uh, we like to talk about the current and prospective flexibility of uh, No Child Left Behind. This is the eighth hearing that this subcommittee has held on No Child Left Behind this year. The full committee, of course, has held many hearings as well. And I think it's safe to say that there is no subject we hear more about than, than flexibility. As written, the law provides for certain flexibilities, and the Department of Education has provided others. But many state and local educators have told us that while they strongly support the law's goals and the discussion about accountability that is, it has fostered, better flexibility would help them to reach those goals. I take their comments very seriously because I always have believed that education is a local function. And Jack Jennings used to hear me say this all the time uh, years ago. A state responsibility, but a very important federal concern. As our society and our world have become more mobile and more interconnected, that national concern has grown. People educated in one state wind up another, and we're competing in a global economy, and education and training will give us the edge in that uh, competition. And regardless of where in the United States students live, they ultimately will compete with students, as say, from around the world. But a greater national concern does not mean less emphasis on state responsibilities and local functions. And so I look forward to the hearing from our witnesses and how flexibility under No Child Left Behind has been implemented and how we can improve that flexibility. Their testimony, as well as the countless conversations that I know each member has had with educators and parents in their district and here in Washington, will play a critical role in the committee's efforts to understand how we can best help to provide every student with a world-class education, a goal we all share. I also look forward to hearing from Mr. Jennings about his center's recent study on trends in student achievement since No Child Left Behind took effect. The title of that study, Answering the Question That Matters Most, Has Student Achievement Increased Since No Child Left Behind, is well chosen, since in the end, the point of all this is student achievement. Of course, one factor that has not increased enough under No Child Left Behind has been funding. We owe it to our children to ensure that their schools have the resources and support to provide them with the education they need and deserve. Since 2002, Congress and the President have underfunded No Child Left Behind by $56 billion. And the President's proposed budget for 2008 would underfund the law by another $15 billion for a total of $71 billion. However, I'm hopeful that with the changes in Washington this year, we will start to do better. Our budget resolution calls for that, moving a little forward on that. But I look forward to continuing to work with my ranking member, Mr. Castle, our full committee chairman and ranking member, Mr. Miller and Mr. McKeon, and with all the members of the committee on a bipartisan reauthorization of No Child Left Behind this year.